All right, so uh, we do a, a shout out here to a new group or an existing group each week. And today's shout out goes to a group called Real Men. They're with the Cross Connection Church in Shawnee, Oklahoma. Some of you area directors may know this church. Uh, there are 10 to 12 guys, and they meet, meet on Friday mornings with us at 7 a.m. They're using the video Bible study. Their leader is Gregory Yord. And so I wonder if you would join me in giving a warm man in the mirror welcome to Real Men. One, two, three. Hoorah! Awesome. Welcome, guys. We're glad to have you with us. So the series we're in is called How God Makes Men. How God Makes Men. So if you're here this morning, there, there's no doubt in my mind that you have a passion to make a contribution. You want your life to feel like you are on mission. You want to lead a life of significance. You want to, you want to make a difference. You want it to be noted that you walked across the face of the planet. Yes? Yes. yes. And so you may have been called to be part of a great mission already, or maybe you are looking for what that mission would be. And yet, no matter whether you have found the way or you're still looking for the way, you have been stunned, perhaps shocked, by the amount of opposition that you find on this mission. That, that you feel like you know exactly what it is that God wants you to do. You go to do it and then you get blocked. What's that about? Or the Lord gives you this concept or this idea of what he wants you to do with your life. And, and then he keeps you in, in the dark constantly. You have no sense of where you're going, uh, no sense of direction. You don't know what's going to happen when you get where you don't know where you're going. And so I want us to talk about that today. And we're going to answer the question, what one thing will most accelerate the fulfillment of your mission? What one thing will most accelerate the fulfillment of your mission? So today we're going to talk about this. We're going to talk about the principle of the power of the Holy Spirit. And so I want you to turn to Acts chapter 13 with me if you are not already there. And so many people call the book of Acts the Acts of the Holy Spirit. It's all about the introduction of the Holy Spirit into the church. And so why is Paul so successful in his mission, notwithstanding all of the opposition, shipwrecks, beatings, starvations, cold, dark, and the answer is, is that he walked in the power of the Holy Spirit. I want us to begin this look into uh, Acts by looking at some examples of men who were led by the Holy Spirit. Acts chapter 13, verse 1 says this in the church. This is Paul's first missionary journey. He took three. In the church at Antioch, there were prophets and teachers, Barnabas, Simeon, called Niger, Lucius of Cyrene, uh, Menaean, who had been uh, brought up with Herod the Tetrarch, and Saul. So there were lots of them. And while they were worshiping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, set apart for me Barnabas and Saul. Barnabas was Paul's Paul, by the way. He's the one that mentored Paul. Set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. And so after they had fasted and prayed, they placed their hands on them and sent them off. And the two of them went, sent on their way by the Holy Spirit. And so the first thing we, we see is that the Holy Spirit sets men apart for mission. Many of you, hopefully all of you, have sensed that at least once in your life, that, that you've been set apart by God to do something magnificent for him. That's what's going on here in the, in the first missionary journey. Now let's take a look at, at the Acts chapter 16, uh, verse 6, and look at something, another example of men being led by the Holy Spirit uh, that occurred on Paul's second missionary journey. So at Acts chapter 16, verse 6, Paul and his companions traveled throughout the region of Phrygia and Galatia, 
having been kept by the Holy Spirit from preaching the word in the province of Asia. So they were blocked from going over into Asia. They thought they were supposed to go. They, they used their free will, uh, sensing that this, they were being led to do this, this work over here in Asia, but the Holy Spirit blocked them from that. And then in verse 7, when, and then when they came to, to the border of Mysia, they tried to enter Bithynia, but the Spirit of Jesus would not allow them to. And so they passed by Mysia and went down to Troas. During the night, Paul had a vision of a man of Macedonia standing and begging him, come over to Macedonia and help us. And after Paul had seen the vision, we got ready, Luke is speaking, we got ready at once to leave for Macedonia, concluding that God had called us to preach the gospel to them. So we don't know how the Holy Spirit was blocking them. Was it, a, was it an army of soldiers? Was it a troop of bandits? Was it the fact that they had no money? What was, was, did, did, uh, did diarrhea go through the whole group when they were sick? We don't know how the Holy Spirit was doing this leading. Uh, and, and I think the Holy Spirit preserves the texts the way that he does many times, leaving things general so that we will pull out the principle and not the tactic. Because what's important here is the principle is that the Holy Spirit leads men who are willing to be led. So he might have done it by voice. We don't know. Who knows? Maybe they didn't have transportation in Asia. Maybe their cars were broke down. Who knows? But through circumstances or immediate or immediate communication, the Holy Spirit led these men, and they obeyed him. They, they, they did what he wanted. Them. And guess what? They didn't have a choice. They had to obey him. And, the, and you know when the, the Spirit is leading you, most of the time you don't have a choice. Because you can't do what you want to do. He shuts you down. He blocks you. And you're thinking, what, what's up with this? He told me to go and do this thing, and now, and now I can't do it. Happens all the time. Big idea today is this. To walk in the power of the Holy Spirit is the one thing that will most accelerate the fulfillment of your mission. To walk in the power of the Holy Spirit is the one thing that will most, most accelerate the fulfillment of your mission. So let's look at a third example from the third missionary journey, Acts chapter 20, verse 22. And so Paul says this. To the uh, Ephesian elders, he says, And now, compelled by the Spirit, I am going to Jerusalem, not knowing what will happen to me there. I only know that in every city, the Holy Spirit warns me that prison and hardships are facing me. So the Holy Spirit is, is speaking to his heart and letting the hardships and prison, that's what I have for you on your mission. However, I consider my life worth nothing to me if only I may finish the race and complete the task, complete the mission. The Lord Jesus has given me the task, the mission of testifying to the gospel of God's grace. And then uh, they're, they're moving on towards Jerusalem and down in, uh, I guess, Caesarea. And then in, in Acts chapter uh, 20, 20, 20, 21, verse 10. It says, after they had been there for a number of days, a prophet named Agabus came down from Judea. And coming over to us, he took Paul's belt, tied his own hands and feet with it, and said, the Holy Spirit says, in this way, the Jews of Jerusalem will bind the owner of this belt and will hand him over to the Gentiles. And when we heard this, says Luke, we and all the other people there, we pleaded with Paul not to go. Don't go to Jerusalem. Then Paul answered, why are you weeping and breaking my heart? 
I'm a man on a mission. I'm fulfilling my task. This is my destiny. This is my offering. This is my sacrifice. This is my service. This is what I was called to do. This is what I was made to do. I was born for this. Why are you weeping for me? I am ready not only to be bound, but to die in Jerusalem for the name of the Lord Jesus. And when he would not be dissuaded, we gave up and said, the Lord's will be done. I guess so. I guess so. The big idea, to walk in the power of the Holy Spirit is the one thing that will most, re, most accelerate us towards the, the fulfillment of our mission. Now, these are three biblical examples but there are examples happening all around us. Every day, every one of us are experiencing this if, we, if we're in touch with the concept, the principle of the power of the Holy Spirit. I'll give you a couple of examples. So David Delk is the president and co-CEO of Man in the Mirror. So when I met David... Uh, Tom Skinner, my best buddy, uh, and I had uh, just finished up a ministry in Jackson, Jackson, Mississippi. Uh, helped start a ministry of uh, racial reconciliation there. Still going on. And uh, I'm not involved, but uh, still going on. And, and so I said, hey, uh, Tom, I'm going to go to Israel uh, with my seminary uh, for credit. <laughs> and uh, why don't you come with me? It's a 13-day trip, and we'll just sort of unwind. And so we did. Well, uh, most of you probably don't know Tom, who Tom Skinner is, but Tom Skinner, uh, in his day, uh, was the leading black evangelist in the world. Speaks, spoke to uh, over a million people every year around the world, live. And, um, and he was a dominating presence. He was the chaplain of the Washington Redskins, powerful figure, and, and he had, you know, he had permanent cards into, into the, all the AF, uh, whatever, the, the baseball, I'm not a baseball guy, but he could get into any dugout and any baseball team. You know, he had cards and, you know, he had these relationships with all these different players and so forth. And, uh, and so he would hold court. Whenever he would speak, his presence was so powerful that people just sort of, you know, sit and listen, kind of like with demure posture as he would talk about this and talk about that. He's the smartest man I ever knew uh, until, until I met David. And uh, <laughs> smartest man I ever knew. And he's, he's a guy who sat down and read through the federal budget just because he wanted to know what was in there. Who does that? I mean, certainly no legislator's ever done that. <laughs> and so he just wanted to, he's just that kind of a guy. And so he had gotten into computers. All right, this 20 years ago, and so you know, computers were they were out there, but you know, there's still a lot of formative kinds of things going on, and so. But he was really getting the, so when he got into something, he would just like read everything that was available. So he'd read like everything that was available on computers, and so I hadn't even met David except to shake his hand, and uh, it's the 13th day, and we're on our way back to Orlando. And uh, we have a farewell dinner in uh, Tel Aviv. And so, uh, as it turned out, that Tom and I were sitting at a table, and, and David Delk, this 28-year-old kid, sat down at our table. And so Tom began to hold court. And he was pontificating this and saying this and that and the other about computers. And after about five minutes, David said, oh, yeah, and by the way, did you know this, this, that, and the other? Tom goes, huh, and I'm wondering, who is this, who is this that has darkened my door? <laughs> and he's, but it was so insightful what David said, he took note of it, and then he, you know, continued on for another two or three minutes, and David said, oh, yeah, and by the way, did you also know this and that? And t Tom goes, oh, that's kind of interesting. And so what happened was, over a period of about 15 minutes, Tom 
who is up here, you know, talking down to his subjects, uh, his loyal subjects, the balance of power shifted over about a 15-minute period, and I promise you that Tom Skinner, this powerful presence, was sitting there like this, listening to David. <laughs> and I said, who is this man? Who is this kid? And so uh, I, I asked him, I said, T tell me about yourself. Uh, and, and so it turns out that he had moved down from Atlanta because God had called him into the ministry. And he was graduating from seminary. That was in January. He's graduating in May. And he was, uh, he was a little modest, but I found out that uh, he was very modest, <laughs> extremely modest. But I did find out that, first of all, he's Phi Beta Kappa in mathematics. Secondly, at RTS, he was graduating number one in his class. He was the president of the senior class, and he preached a senior, senior sermon. So he's like this superstar out there at RTS. Do you know that of all his classmates, he was the only one who had not been offered a job? <laughs> Can you imagine how he must have felt? Lord, what's wrong with me? Did I not hear your call? Are, why am I being blocked here? Why am I in the dark? What's going on? Well, men, it's so obvious now that even though he had to go through that period, that dark period, it's so obvious now that God had reserved him for men's discipleship. He's, he's one of the leading figures in the entire world when it comes to men's discipleship. There are many other examples like that. I took longer to tell that story than I, than I wanted. So let's move on. I love that story, though. Isn't that a great story? Yeah, and the big idea is to walk in the power of the Holy Spirit. That is what he was doing, and that is the one thing that will most accelerate the fulfillment of your mission, even if you feel like you're standing still. Do you get that? Even if you feel like you're, you're marching backwards, if you are doing that in the power of the Holy Spirit, you are accelerating towards the fulfillment of your mission. Never forget this. Never forget this. Okay, so who is he and what does he do? Well, we know from Genesis 1 that, that the Spirit of God was hovering over the deep. So he was right there at the beginning of creation. We know that he is one of the three persons of the Trinity. We know that he is the author of salvation. We, 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 we know from, from Titus chapter 3. You might just <coughs> jot down these verses. Don't, we're not, don't, don't try to look them up, but you might want to jot them down if you're interested. So Genesis 1, 1 and 2, and then Titus 3, verse 5. Uh, he saves. <coughs> he saves us. By the washing of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit. Uh, he is the author of salvation. So he's also the author of Scripture. Uh, I, I, this is good enough that I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to go ahead. Don't do it because you'll never get there as fast as I will. Because I think I have it marked. Actually, I didn't have it marked. I, I lied about that. But um, 2 Peter chapter 2, verse... Um, 20. 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 20. Okay. 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 20. Above all, you must understand that no prophecy of Scripture came about by the prophet's own interpretation. For prophecy never had its origin in the will of man, but men spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. So, he conceived Jesus in the, in the womb of Mary. John 14, 6 says, Jesus said, But the Counselor, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and remind you of everything I have said. So the Holy Spirit is teaching us all things and everything that Jesus said. He's reminding us of what those words were. He is the giver of gifts. Uh, 
1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 4 and 7. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 4 and 7. There are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit. Now, to each one, to every believer, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. There, there are lists of gifts. There, there are lists of gifts. Lists of gifts. In the, in the Bible, 1 Corinthians 12, Romans 12, Ephesians 4, uh, 1 Peter 4. There are lists of the spiritual gifts. In, in Galatians, uh, the Spirit gives the fruits of himself. Himself. Notice it's who is he, not who is it. He gives fruits of himself. Love, joy, peace, patience. I had a guy ask me one time. He called me up on the phone. He's having a big problem with the business. He said, oh, please pray that I have patience. Said, you don't want me to pray that. You don't, need, you don't need to pray for patience. You have all the patience you need. Just Instead, just be filled with the Holy Spirit because that's one of the fruits of the Holy Spirit. So be filled with the Holy Spirit. Walk in his power and you have all the patience you want. Now, does this work every day? I don't think so. Every day, I don't walk in the power of the Holy Spirit. I mean, every day, there are multiple occasions. Okay, so I've been practicing. I made this commitment. It's really tough. I'm practicing, but to not follow the car in front of me too closely. Well, you know what happens when you don't follow the car in front of you too closely? Everybody jumps in on front of you. And, you know, I, I'm sitting there. I'm taking it. I'm taking it. But I'm competitive in a car, okay? And so I'm taking I'm taking And every now and then, I just can't take it anymore. And I lose the Holy Spirit, all right? So can you do this 100% of the time? Absolutely not. I'm over at the gym. I'm over at the gym last week. And, uh, you know, I'm doing supersets. Okay, sounds big, like a big deal for those of you who don't know. So I'll just leave it at that. No, actually, <laughs> it just means that you're alternating between two, two exercises. So I'm supersetting, and I'm, uh, I'm doing some deadlifts, and I'm doing something. Else. And so I'm over there with, by the deadlifts, you know, and, and uh, there's this guy and it's obvious that I'm supersetting, okay? And so he says to me, with a bit of hubris, he says, says uh, are, are you on that? I'm standing right over it. Are you, are you on that right now? I said, yeah, I'm on this right now. <laughs> and so then I walked away and did the other thing, and I, I came back, and he says to me, he says, how many more sets do you have anyway? <laughs> bye bye, Holy Spirit! <laughs> So you shouldn't expect to walk in the power of the Holy Spirit all the time. And that's what it says in Galatians. In, in Galatians 5, we talked about the fruits of the Spirit of verses 22 and 23. But up in, you know, around 14, 15, 16, 17, around there, it says that the, 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 the Spirit uh, wars against the flesh and the flesh wars against the Spirit. So walk in the Spirit. Be led by the Spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the sinful nature. But you're not going to be able to do that all the time. That's just life. That's just life. And so the Holy Spirit gives us power. Power. Acts chapter 1, verse 8. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And you will be my witnesses. So... Can you, when somebody does something to you like they did to me in the gym, can you overcome that and continue to walk in the Spirit? Well, the truth is I actually did. I didn't say anything to him out loud. <laughs> and then finally, who is he and what does he do? Matthew chapter 10, verses 19 and 20 says that, that when you're brought before the authorities and so on, you don't know what to say. The Holy Spirit will tell you what to say. And I think this has a, 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 as a principle, has a much broader application than you've been arrested for being a Christian. It means when you are in front of somebody and, and uh, you're trying to resolve a family conflict or, or you're trying to make a sale for your business or... You know, you're trying to complete a, a, a you fill, you, you're filling out a tax return for somebody, or you're fixing their automobile, okay? It doesn't make any difference what it is. That the Holy Spirit will tell you what to do when you need it. 
That's why the big idea today is this, to walk in the power of the Holy Spirit. It's the one thing that will most accelerate the fulfillment of your mission, whatever it is. All right. Finally, how you can walk, how you can walk in the power of the Holy Spirit. A couple thoughts here. First thing is, is knowledge. Knowledge. We talked about who he is and, and uh, what he does, but knowing what the Holy Spirit wants. What does the Holy Spirit want? He wants to teach you. He wants to teach you all things. The Holy Spirit wants to remind you of everything that Jesus said. The Holy Spirit wants to empower you. He wants to lead you. Romans 8, 14, all who are uh, led by the Spirit are sons of God. He wants to lead you. He wants to give you spiritual gifts so that you can serve him. He wants you to experience, he wants you to bear much fruit, the fruit of good works, but also the fruit of the Spirit, his love, joy, peace, and so forth. He wants that for you. This is what the Holy Spirit wants. If you, are you experiencing these things? If you're not experiencing these things, it's because possibly you're not walking in the power of the Holy Spirit. It's the one thing that can most accelerate the fulfillment of your mission. And he wants to be your constant companion. Constant companion. So the knowledge piece, if you want to walk in the power of the Holy Spirit, the knowledge piece is first. And then, then there is then there's the, the, the doing. There's the doing part. Hey, uh, a guy came to the Bible study a few months ago, and uh, he, uh, yeah, he looked like, he looked like, he should be on the poster for a military ad. He's, he told this story that, that he was in the military and he was a recruiter. And his job was recruiting uh, doctors and nurses. And so he was out one day and he was in his dress blues. And he went into a convenience store to get a bottle of water, to get something to drink. And he had been wrestling with God and just telling God, God, I want to have a deeper relationship with you. I want to be all in with you. I, I really want to, I want to be fully committed to you. I really want to grow in my faith. I, I really want to do whatever it takes. So show me what I need to do, Lord. Show me what I need to do to, to, to be all in with you. And so he went in and he, he got this drink out of the cooler. And he heard the Holy Spirit whisper to him, I want you to stand on your head. <laughs> and he was pretty sure it was the Holy Spirit. Sounds to me a little kooky, but it's, uh, so he was pretty sure it was the Holy Spirit. This guy was in his dress blues. In a convenience store in his dress blues. He said, I'm not going to do that. That's crazy. And the Spirit kept pressing, uh, impressing on him. I want you to go stand on your head. He said, I never ever, I've never even stood on my head before. I, w I don't even know how to do it. I want you to stand on your head. And so he finally got to a point where he felt like just he was going to be disobedient not to do it. But, but he said, you know, I want to be all in. And if I have to be a fool for you, then, then, then so be it. And so he went over, uh, got next to the wall, and figured out how to prop himself up and lean against the wall. And so there he is in this convenience store in his dress blues, standing on his head. <laughs> Nothing happened. So he got down and went over and started to pay the clerk for the bottle of water, and the clerk was crying. And the clerk said, I am at the end of myself. I, I don't know where to turn. I don't know what to do. I want to believe in God, but I, I just have found it impossible to believe in God. And so this morning, I pray, God, if you really are there, then send somebody into my store today who will stand on their head.
do what the Holy Spirit tells you. The big idea here today is this. To walk in the power of the Holy Spirit, it's the one thing that will most accelerate the fulfillment of your mission. Let us pray. Our dearest Father, we come to you humbly today. Um, We know that you oppose the proud, but you give grace to the humble. And there is no greater grace than your grace. There is no greater blessing than to be able to walk and be led by your Spirit, to experience your power. And so, Lord... uh, the Holy Spirit, Lord, you, you are not taught enough, probably, not talked enough about, probably. I know that many of the men here and uh, online are, are deeply connected to you, Holy Spirit. But for those of us who, who needed this nudge this morning, I pray, Father, that you would give us a, a, an appetite, a greater appetite to, to know more about you and how we can release this power that you have in our lives, and that you would be glorified as we then accelerate towards fulfilling the mission that you have given us each. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.